Hello everyone, and welcome back to another thrilling episode of How to Cheese It with Feng Wei. Uh, I'm your host as always, Ben, from the hideously named Skeksy Man Tekken channel, which I will be changing soon because I'm absolutely sick of it. But uh, other than that, the uh, cheese that I'm going to be sharing with you today is something of a rather underutilized move. In fact, it's a very, very underutilized move. I know that sounds like an awful lot of underutilized, but um, but stick with me, bear with me here. So uh, the, the move I'm talking about is Feng's Assassin's Bow. Uh, you might know it as up forward 3 plus 4 with a 3 extension. And the reason I wanted to cover this move is, aside from the fact that it's very, very underutilized, is the fact that it has a lot of strange, quirky uses that are actually extremely good for mixing up your opponents and confusing them. Now. It is inherently risky, as are a lot of Feng's moves, but there is potential for quite big reward with it as well, and I actually use it in my own gameplay to quite a, a large degree of success, to be fair. So um, let's dive into this, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm just going to give you a brief demo now of the move, you know, the first part of the move anyway. So here we go. Okay, so that is the first part of the move, and that is essentially just performed by doing up forward 3 plus 4. Dead simple. Uh, as you can see, it is minus 14 on block, so definitely not safe, so be careful with it. Uh, I demonstrated it for you twice there, and that's the way I'm going to go forward with all these clips. So uh, yeah, that's going to be the general format, demonstrate everything twice just so you get a good look at it. So let's uh, moving forward, let's see how it looks with the 3 extension. Okay, so that is the move in its entirety. Uh, to do that, you basically press up forward 3 plus 4, and during the animation, you just press the 3 button, and then you'll get that extra kick on the end. Uh, be careful with it, that kick on the end is very, very duckable, so uh, more on that in a minute. Um, you'll see that it's minus 6 on block, so generally a lot safer, and also, if you've seen my Shifting Clouds video, you'll remember that that is a really, really good Shifting cloud setup, so um, again, more on that later. So for now, um, let's just see how these look on hit. Okay, so as you saw right there, expertly demonstrated by myself, of course, was up forward 3 plus 4 just by itself. And as you saw, it gives you a nice launcher for a nice big combo, which is just fantastic. Uh, the great thing about this move in general is that the animation right at the start of it makes it look like he's kind of going for a crouch. So a lot of people might instinctively duck, which is kind of cool. But uh, anyway, let's see how it looks with the 3 extension. So, as you can see with that, it's pretty much the same either way. You still get a launch and a combo, regardless of whether you go for the up forward 3 plus 4 by itself, or whether you go for the up forward 3 plus 4 with the 3 extension. The only difference, really, is that going for the 3 extension is a bit more risky, unless, of course, you've conditioned your opponent to not duck it, uh, which I might explain a bit later on. But uh, for now, let's see what happens if they try and interrupt that extension 3. So that is essentially what happens if your opponent tries to interrupt that extension 3. And you'll notice I included a clip of some gameplay there against a Lydia player. Now, to be fair, this Lydia player, in our first game, she started out ducking the extension 3, which is what you should do. That's what good opponents will do. But the way I managed to get her to eat that extension 3 was by basically conditioning her to not duck it, which sounds a bit kind of weird, I know, but the, the way I did that was to kind of use up forward 3 plus 4 as a back 1 setup, which um, it works almost like a frame trap, but not. It's tricky to explain, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean in a minute, because this is where the mind games really begin with up forward 3 plus 4 and up forward 3 plus 4 extension. But before I get into that, I just want to show you kind of the dangers of using the extension 3 and what it will look like when your opponent ducks it, because this is the correct counterplay to up forward 3 plus 4 with the 3 extension, okay? Um, so yeah, basically this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so basically if that happens, it goes without saying that you're in trouble. 
you're going to have a bad time, you're probably going to get launched or at least eat a hefty bit of damage. So that is why it's pretty important to kind of test the waters with this a little bit first and see how your opponent responds to it. But on the flip side, if they are ducking as they correctly should, as they quite correctly should, then this is where we can begin to implement the strategy that I was alluding to just a moment ago, which is using up forward 3 plus 4 by itself as a back 1 setup. Now, it kind of... It works a little bit like a frame trap, but not. So, I mean, it's kind of somewhere in between. I suppose it's, it's closer to a setup than a frame trap, so let's just call it a setup for now. But... Uh, but yeah, this is where we can kind of begin conditioning them and, and using it for mind games a little bit. So it's probably a lot easier anyway if I just show you. So uh, have a look at this anyway, and I'll explain it clearly a lot better afterwards. Okay, so just have a look at this. Okay, so hopefully that kind of spoke for itself a little bit. Uh, but basically what's happening there is that they're expecting the extension 3, so they duck. And then they realize it's not coming, so they quickly try and remedy that by attacking. But they're too late and they get their ass back one. So that's essentially what's happening there. And I included a good you know, couple of in-game clips as well for you to see, you know, see how it works against a real opponent. Because trust me, it does work. It's really, really good. I've had all sorts of level of player out with this. I've had God of Destructions with it, all sorts. So, I mean, it is surprisingly effective. And, you know, this is where the mind games can really begin with up forward 3 plus 4 and up forward 3 plus 4 extension. It's really, really quite... Uh, it's a fun move to play around with, it really is. But it is risky, which is why I would sort of urge you to kind of test the waters a little bit first and see how they react to it. Uh, either way, you're going to have to take risks, though, because if you just do the up forward 3 plus 4 by itself, it is minus 14, so that's not safe. And obviously, if you just go straight for the up forward 3 plus 4 extension, there's every chance they might duck it. So you've got to play around with it a little bit and develop your own sense of timing with it and also get a sense of what type of opponent you're dealing with. But I can certainly vouch for the fact that it is really, really effective. Now, obviously, there are downsides to it, and if they don't duck and they try and attack after you're up that four three plus four and you're back one uh you are going to get hit basically so um so uh, again if you've used this once or twice against your opponent they might wise up to it and then they'll start attacking straight after the up forward three plus four but again that's when you can surprise them with the extension three so i mean you can just keep on playing around with it uh the sky's the limit so to speak so uh, so let's just see what happens if this setup fails So, as you saw right there, using up forward 3 plus 4 as a back 1 setup certainly isn't bulletproof by any means, and it can be quite easily interrupted, as you just saw. Uh, this is one of the reasons, funnily enough, why it works better on higher level opponents than it does on lower level opponents. For the simple reason being that, no offence to them, but lower level opponents probably don't even know that the extension 3 could be coming. And even if it does, they aren't going to know how to deal with it, so they're just going to mash, and then that's going to happen. So, um, so yeah, it definitely has a much, much higher success rate with higher level opponents. So it's definitely worth bearing that in mind. That's not to say that you can't mix up lower level opponents with it, but it just requires a different approach. In general, I find it's easier to catch out higher level opponents with it. Um, but anyway, that's straying off topic slightly right now. So there is one more use of Assassin's Bow or up for 3 plus 4 extension 3 that I wanted to go over and that is something that I mentioned near the start of the video and that is regarding using it as a shifting cloud setup. So for those of you that have seen the shifting clouds video you'll know all about this already but basically the extension 3 on Assassin's Bow is minus 6 on block which fits perfectly into our shifting clouds parry window and it is a really really good one. If your opponent blocks that extension 3 uh, they're more than likely going to try and attack afterwards, and then you're absolutely golden for a Shifting Clouds parry. So uh, I'm just going to give you an example of that now. And like I say, if you've seen the Shifting Clouds video, you'll be familiar with this already, but I thought it's rude not to mention it in a video that is solely dedicated to this move. So, um, so here's a demo of that in action.
Okay, so that about covers it. So what I've done in this video basically is I've tried to splice together a good mixture of lab footage and real real life practical, you know, footage, basically in-game footage, gameplay footage if you will. It's a new format that I'm kind of playing around with, so let me know what you think, or if you prefer just the straight up lab clips. I'd be interested to know what you think anyway, but uh, those are basically all the uses that I can think of uh, for Assassin's Bow or up for 3 plus 4 extension 3. Like I say, it is a obscenely underutilized move with great potential. High risk, but very high reward potentially. So I would urge everyone to make better use of this move. It is one of his, uh, I would call it kind of secret tech, if you will, secret feng tech, maybe. Let's go with that. That sounds kind of cool and, uh, and mysterious. So yeah, definitely a very, very underrated move that needs a bit more attention because it's got some great hidden potential within it. So just to go over what we went through, just to give you the short version. So we went over the basic versions of the move, you know, so you've got the up forward three plus four by itself, gives you a launch. And we've also got the up forward three plus four, three extension also gives you a launch. So uh, happy days. Then we went over what happens if people try and interrupt the extension three, they essentially get knocked down. So happy days with that. And then we went over something a bit more complicated, well, not exactly complicated, but uh, this is where the mind games kind of begin, really, and that's using up forward 3 plus 4 by itself as a setup for a back 1. Really, really good, really, really effective. Definitely give it a try, play around with it. It's a, this, like I said, this is a really fun move to play around with and get creative with and try and mix your opponents up with. It does take a bit of... Um, a bit of know-how you need to, like with anything, you know, I, I say it in pretty much every video, but you've got to develop your own sense of timing with it and also when to fit in the up forward three plus four. That all comes with experience, which I can't really teach you really. So, um, and then last but not least, of course, we covered um, using up forward three plus four, three extension as a shifting clouds parry setup, which I've been over before in my shifting clouds video. If you haven't seen that, please watch it. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in that video. It's a long video, so, so uh, if you haven't got much time, maybe uh, set aside some time for it. It's a bit of a lengthy one. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you find it useful. And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and give me some feedback, you know, because I'm always curious to know what you guys think of these videos, you know, and what you think, where you think I could improve and whatnot. It's a work in progress, as always. So, um, but for now, guys, that's about going to do it. So take care, and I will see you all next time.